Hello, and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to, an introduction into wireless robotics using Bluetooth. My name is Sam Jaffe, and I am one of the lead instructors here at Digital Media Academy. In this wireless robotics how-to, we'll be talking about the application processing and how to use it to send data to our Bluetooth module. What you'll need to complete this project is an RN42XV Bluetooth module, a regulated breakout board for the Bluetooth module, a Macintosh computer with Bluetooth, an Arduino board, a breadboard, some wire, and whatever other electronic components you'd like to put on your robot, like motors, servos, or lights. Let's get started. In the last videos, we saw how to set up the Bluetooth module. Then we saw how to program the Arduino to read and interpret serial data. We also saw how to connect Arduino to the Bluetooth module. Now all we have to do is send the data from the computer to the Bluetooth module. To do this, we'll be using an application called Processing. Processing is free, open source, and closely related to the Arduino software, so it should feel familiar. To start, download Processing. Open it and type the following. Like the Arduino software, the setup function is where you'll put code that runs once when you start up your program. The draw function is where you'll put code that you want to loop continuously. It's called draw because every time you get to the end of the draw function, it draws whatever code you told it to draw. We'll be using processing for the data transfer capabilities, so we won't be using this now. To see how to draw things and do more complicated stuff with processing, see the processing examples. So let's start by sending some generic data over our Firefly serial port. To do this, go into File, then Examples. Click the Libraries folder, Serial, then open the Serial Write example. Let's rewrite this and talk about what each step is doing. This first part is importing the Serial library. This will give us access to Serial functions like Serial.read and Serial.write. Next, we'll declare a Serial object and call it MyPort. An object is basically a box where you can store parameters and functions. For example, this serial object will store an address which it'll write to. It will also have functions that we can use like the aforementioned read and write. We'll see how to manipulate this object to get it to do what we want to do later. Next, we have to select which serial port we want to use. We do this with a serial.list function. Serial.list will return the names of our serial ports. Let's use this line of code to print out the names of our ports. So when you clicked play, a little gray box popped up and some text printed on the bottom of our sketch. That little gray box is for drawing things, which we're not doing right now. For now, we're only interested in the printed values. So here are my serial ports. What we want is the first Firefly port. Copy and paste this address into your sketch. We'll put this in the right place in a moment. Now we have to initialize the object my port. We do this by typing my port equals new serial, then the correct parameters. We can look at the example code as a reference. This is a fancy Java term that just refers to the object we're currently working with. The next parameter is the port name. Cut and paste the Firefly address as this parameter. Next, type 115,200 for the baud rate. Now we have a serial object. We've given it an address to write to, and we've given it a baud rate. We just have one function left. We will be using the write function to write to the Bluetooth module. All you have to do is type myport.write, then tell it what data you want to send. Let's start by sending the data hello world. So let's go through what we have to make sure everything's clear. We have processing sending data to our Bluetooth serial port. The computer then sends that data over Bluetooth to our Bluetooth device. Our Bluetooth device then sends the data to the Arduino. For testing, we'll have the Arduino print out what it reads to our computer's serial monitor. So upload this sketch to the Arduino. Make sure the RX pin is unplugged as you upload, and don't forget to plug it back in once your Arduino is ready. If we click play, we get an error. That's because our Bluetooth module isn't connected. What we have to do is go into System Preferences, Bluetooth, select our Firefly port, click the gear, and go to Edit Serial Ports. And click Cancel or Apply. As you can see, now it's connected. It'll stay connected for 30 seconds and wait until you send data to it. Now it's sending hello world. And let's open up our serial monitor to see if the Arduino is printing it back out. 
It is. Would you look at that? So as cool as that is, it's not very useful. What we're going to do now is use some more of processing's capabilities. We're going to use the key pressed and the key released functions. These functions will be run every time a key is pressed or released. They run independently of the draw loop. Another thing we're going to use is key. Key is a variable that updates based on the keys you press and release. So if you press the letter K on your keyboard, the variable key has the value K. If you release K, then the value stays at K. The value of key is the last key you either pressed or released. So here's our new program. Every time a key on the keyboard is pressed, it'll write the value of that key, it'll write the number one, and then it'll print out to the black screen below the key and then a one. Anytime a key is released, the computer will send the key value and then a zero. Then we're going to print out the same thing down here. And we're going to get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. So, go to the gear, go to edit serial port, wait for it to connect, and now run your code. Open up the serial monitor to see what the Arduino is reading. If I press Q, Q1 is sent. If I release, Q0 is sent. As you can see, it's printing down here, and it's writing to the serial port, which goes to the Bluetooth module, then to the Arduino, and then back to the computer here. So I can press other buttons too. If I press P, O, I, and then release P, O, I, it sends that data. Now let's keep this code for processing and do a little bit more with Arduino. If you're not familiar with programming, check out the Arduino references on the arduino.cc website. Look up any terms that I say that you don't know. So what I've done with the processing code is I've slightly consolidated the write function. So it's one line. What I've done with the Arduino code is created two variables called W and A. I've also set the pin mode for digital pin 2 as an output. Now in my loop, I check if the serial buffer has data. If it does, I take the first character and place it into a character called ch, or ch. Then I use ch and see whether it's a w or an a. If it's a w, then the variable w will get the next value. This is a quick way of converting a character to an integer. If the first character is a w, then the integer w gets either a zero or a one depending on the data sent. If it's an a, variable a gets the data. Now later in our code, we check if w equals 1. If w equals 1, then we write digital pin 2 high. If a equals 1, we write digital pin 2 low. Then we print out w equals and then w's value, and a equals and then a's value. Then we wait to give it some time to rest. So let's see how it works. When I press the w, the black screen on the bottom of processing says w1. Also, the serial monitor in our Arduino software says 1 as well. We've also used the digital write function on pin 2 to turn on this LED. Now if I let go, it'll stay the same because we didn't tell it to turn off yet. So if I press A, A1 is sent, A1 is received, and the LED turns off. So now all you have to do is use more variables. Get data for W, A, S, D, any other keys on the keyboard you want. Then you can use that, the digital write function, and some other external hardware to turn on motors and drive a robot. So that's the basic idea. Check out these links to see what you can do with a bit more code and a bit more hardware. With a few applications, some code and components, you can control just about anything from your computer over Bluetooth. If you're interested in building a robot like this, visit digitalmediaacademy.org. We have a class where teenagers can build a robot just like the one in the demo video we linked to. They'll learn everything in these how-tos and much more. Check it out, and thanks for watching.